morning everyone today we will continue about our discussion about constructing body plots so uh, what we covered last time is uh, is um, uh, poles at origin so we said that if h of s has any numbers of poles at the origin Sn, let's say to the power n. So this is 1 over s times 1 over s multiplied by itself n times. Right? And one way to visualize this is to, to visualize that all those zeros, poles and zeros of the transfer function happen on the complex plane, right? On the, on the real and imaginary axis, complex plane. So those are all poles that occur at the origin. And it's um, customary to represent poles with x's and zeros with with circles. So you see this uh, designation a lot. Okay. So yeah, so we covered what would the body plot look like for such a thing. So if we plot log omega versus uh, the magnitude of h j omega n d b. And whenever we say db, we impl imply that we, what we're plotting is 20 log uh, hj omega, right? So this would be like a line, straight line, passing through the origin. The origin corresponds to, to log omega equals zero, meaning that omega will equal one, right? Because wh uh, what has a logarithm of, one, of zero? One. Right, so this, this thing will be a straight line and will have a slope of, of minus n 20 dB per decade. Right? Uh, per decade. And we say per, uh, that we represent the slope as per decade because the slope, uh, I'm referring here to decade of frequency, right? because the slope is with respect to log omega, but with respect to frequency, every unit of omega is one decade, right? Because here, if I have log omega equals 2, that's equivalent to omega equals what? 10 to the power 2, right? So that's uh, 100. What if I go one step? One step is equivalent to log omega equals 3, which is equivalent to omega equals 1,000. So each single step, each unity step, on the x-axis is equivalent to one decade uh, and if you go to the left it's one decade behind meaning one tenth right so so at one that's log omega equals one so that's omega equals 10. so we go from omega equals 10 to omega equals 100 to omega equals 1000 so going stepping uh, to the front by one unit is is, uh, is multiplying by 10 equivalent to multiplying by 10 stepping back one unit is equivalent to dividing by 10. Okay. so this is what the body plot will look like and it's very easy to plot it's just a straight line and then and then if i plot the phase the phase will just gonna be each one of those, 1 over SS, is going to have a magnitude of phase of, sorry, minus 90. So uh, num uh, complex numbers multiplied together. When you multiply complex numbers together, you just add the phases. So the resultant phase will be minus 90 times n, minus 90 degrees times n. So if we have 1 over S squared, we will have minus 180. And the phase is going to be constant. Okay. So this is if you have a bunch of poles at the origin. It's either a single pole or a bunch of them. What about zeros at the origin? Well, if we have a bunch of uh, zeros at origin, right? so in this case, h of s is going to be equal s. And let's say we have m. m could be 1 or it could be more, right? but we have m of them m of those zeros. So uh, again, the trick is to write down hj omega. So that's going to be hj omega to the power m. What's the magnitude of hj omega? 
Well, we said, I mean, if we have a bunch of complex numbers multiplied together, their magnitude is equivalent to the magnitude of each number multiplied with itself. So, so, so if I have complex number A, B, C, D, E, whatever, then this is equal to magnitude A times magnitude B times magnitude C. Right? This is the basic property of the magnitude. So I have J omega multiplied by itself m times. Right? I just need to find the magnitude of J omega, which is omega, and then multiply that m times. So this is the magnitude, omega um, m. And I want to take the 20 log now, 20 log hj omega. So that's going to be 20 log omega m. I use the basic property of the logarithm. I take the m out. So this becomes 20 m log omega. Aha. So, so now the body plot is apparent. So now uh, 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 hj omega and db, which is 20 log magnitude hj omega, is just going to be something as a function of log omega is going to be something with a slope 20m. So the slope, right, and this is here, either here this is 0, I can, I can say 0, 1, 2, Three, I can label the ticks this way, minus one, right? I'm labeling the ticks with respect to log omega, or I could label the ticks with respect in this way, with respect to omega. So I could say this is 10 to the power zero, this is 10 to the power one omega, this is 10 to the power two omega, 10 to the power three omega. So, so I can label the ticks directly in log omega, and the axis is log omega, or although the axis is log omega, I can, for, for clarity reasons, I could label the ticks with the values of omega, 10 to the power minus 1. So this is uh, uh, 1 radius per second, uh, 10 radius per second, 100 radius per second, 1000 radius per second, 0.1 radius per second. Any of those three different ticks on the x-axis are equivalent. I mean, you should understand that from context. The key thing is that you just draw the body plot as a straight line and it has now a positive slope of 20 m dB per decade. If m is 1, meaning I have only 1 s, the slope will be 20 dB per dB per decade. Okay, so that's the, the uh, zeros, that's how we plot zeros at the origin. Of course, the phase now. What about the phase? Well, the phase of each one of those zeros is 90 degrees. So now instead of having minus 90, now we start at 90. It's a constant 90 degrees, but it's 90 degrees times what m? Each one of each zero introduces an extra 90 degrees. Okay, and this would be the phase response or the phase body plot. And this is the magnitude plot. All right. So now, what about? So this is simple enough. What about simple poles and simple zeros? Okay. So let's do that. Let's let's write down a simple pole. What would a simple pole look like? Uh, so I wrote it down in normalized form. Remember, so I wrote it down as one plus tau a s. This is a normalized form. We said this is the normalized form of of a pole because at 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 omega equals zero. Remember, S is J omega. At omega equals zero, this whole thing becomes unity. The, the transfer function becomes one. Right? That's why we call it the normalized form of the pole. How would we plot this? Well, I mean, again, nothing new. We do the same thing. We plug in J omega and we take the 20 log. And then, and then we will discover something. So if I do this, if I take this, I say, of course, I'm going to take the magnitude. So this is going to be one plus J omega tau a magnitude okay so and I want to take 20 log so I take 20 log magnitude hj omega 
right? This becomes 20 log. I don't want to calculate this magnitude yet, right? So uh, uh, 1 over 1 plus j omega tau a. Right? This is a magnitude 1 plus j omega tau a to the power minus 1. I, think I can take the power minus 1 out. So I end up with minus 20. Notice the minus 20 appears. Log magnitude 1 plus j omega tau a. Now, notice this is a bit more complicated than the case for a constant or a simple point and zero, because ultimately what we want to do, we want to plot with respect to log omega. But here, we don't have a simple log omega appearing here. We have a more complicated thing. We have a log magnitude 1 plus j omega tau a. Right? So this is a bit more complicated expression. It's not clear how we can simplify it. We, it's not clear that we can draw this as a straight line. And it turns out we cannot do, draw this in the, in, the, in the body plot, in the logarithmic body plot, as a straight line. But it turns out, we will discover, we can draw, draw this as a bunch of straight lines. A bunch of straight lines that are asymptotes. So we can, we can examine this function at different regions of the fre of frequency. And, and, and plot different asymptotes for different regions. There are really two main reasons. We can take, we can consider either the region where omega tau a is much larger than, than, than 1. That's region 1. Region 2 is where omega tau a is much smaller than 1. That's region number 2. Okay, so we can examine the asymptotes of this function for 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 uh, a large frequency and for small frequency, not just frequency, frequency multiplied by tau a, by that constant by, that represents where the pole is. Okay. We said uh, tau a is one over omega naught. We cons cons I mean, uh, omega is radians per second and tau is in seconds. Right. So so. Another thing you would see in some textbooks, instead of tau a, they would say omega over omega naught, for example. And, uh, I mean, but in your mind, just tau a is just 1 over omega naught, or 1 over omega a. Okay, But this is the key thing. The key thing is we consider a frequency domain where this is much larger than 1, and then consider a frequency domain where this is much larger than, than, than uh, smaller than one, right? So we consider another way of writing this, we consider a domain where tau is much larger than one over tau a, one over tau a is omega a, or where a domain where, where omega is much smaller than one over tau a, which is again, omega a. So there's like a special frequency where if we are larger than this frequency, we can use one approximation. If we're smaller than this frequency, we can use another approximation. What are those approximations? Let's say omega t a tau a is much larger than one, which means that omega is much larger than, than omega a, which equals one over tau a. Okay. Uh, well, because this is much larger than one, I can ignore the one. So I end up with 20 log hj omega equals what? Equals minus 20 log uh, uh, magnitude j omega tau, which is which is what? Which is omega tau, tau a. Right? So this would be the expression. I can uh, now uh, use the property of the logarithm. If I have two numbers multiplied with each other, I can take the log of the first uh, 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 plus the log of the second, right? So this is going to be minus 20 log omega plus log tau a. So this is going to be minus 20 
log omega. Now I have this as a function of log omega, which I can plot because my x-axis is log omega. And then I have minus 20 log tau a. I can rewrite this in terms of omega a. So this is minus 20. It's easier to plot frequency on the x-axis rather than time constant. So this is going to be minus 20 log 1 over omega a. So this is going to be omega a to the power minus 1. So this is going to be, if I take the minus 1 out, it's going to be plus Yeah. Right. And this is going to give me the clue on how what the asymptote is going to look like. The asymptote now for high frequency. So I don't see, I don't have the full body plot yet, magnitude of the of the body plot yet. I have the what the body plot asymptote is going to look like at high frequency. So if I want to plot this at high frequency. What will happen is that is that when log omega i'm going to get 0 db so this is 0 db here this, you know uh the y when the y-axis is 0 db is with, with when 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 log omega equals log omega a right that's when it will happen right so this is log omega a so this will happen when the frequency this will be 0 dB when the frequency is omega a. So remember this tick, I can, I can mark, it, mark it by the frequency directly, or I can just say log omega a. I'm going to use the convention of marking it by the frequency directly, knowing that this is a logarithmic scale. So at, at when, when log omega equals log omega a, I'm going to get 0 dB, meaning at frequency omega a, I'm going to get 0 dB. And then after that, I have a straight line. After that, I have a function of log omega, so it's like y equals uh, uh, some m x plus b. It's, just, it's, a, it's a straight line, it's still a straight line equation, right? So I'm going to get a straight line with a slope of minus 20 dB per decade. So this would be the asymptote, this straight line would be the asymptote for high frequency so this will be for omega higher than omega a what about for for uh, omega tau a much smaller than one well that means i can ignore that i can ignore this omega tau a and i and i get log one what's log one zero right so 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 for for this i'm gonna get hj omega 20 log in this frequency region, I'm going to get minus 20 log 1, which is log 1 is 0, so it's going to be 0 dB. So the other asymptote for frequencies smaller than omega a is going to be 0. Let me uh, change the color. Okay, so there you have it. This is the... Uh, this is this is the body plot for a simple pole then. It will look like this. Log omega. So at frequency omega a equals one over tau a. I'm gonna uh, have two asymptotes. I'm gonna have an asymptote that's zero dB up to omega a, and then I'm gonna have a straight line going down with a slope of minus twenty dB per decade. And this is very easy to ske sketch. Uh, uh, it's not unlike uh, simple power zero. It's not one straight line now. It's two straight lines that extend back, right? Uh, but this would be the asymptotic sketch of of uh, of, of the frequency response for a simple uh, magnitude frequency response of a simple pole. Now, the actual frequency response is gonna is gonna get closer and closer to this asymptote, meaning the actual frequency response is gonna start very close to this asymptote it's going to diverge from it as we get close to omega a and then as as the frequency gets higher it's going to get closer to the second asymptote so at, at at very high frequencies and at very low frequencies we 
get closer and closer to the asymptote. The biggest error happens at omega a because of at the point omega a, I mean, we are neither much larger than omega a nor are we much smaller than omega a. So we should expect the maximum difference between our asymptote, asymptotic approximation and our actual curve to occur there. And the uh, maximum uh, error does occur there. If you calculate that error, it turns out to be minus uh, 3 dB. The difference between the asymptotes and the actual curve turned to be, turns out to be minus 3 dB. Okay? So, so this is how a simple uh, pole, ma the magnitude of a simple pole would look like. What about the phase now? Well, same deal. Uh, we have to draw the asymptotes. So we have log omega, and then I have now the phase of h j omega, and the asymptotes here is very simple. It's not, it's not that hard. So, so we have omega a. Right. What happens if we are at a much larger frequency than, than omega a? Well, we can ignore the one, and then we get j omega tau a, which has an angle of, of what? Uh, uh, well, it's in the, it's in the, it's in the uh, uh, sorry, it's in the denominator. So it has, we have a, a j in the denominator, so we'll have an angle of minus 90. So we should expect the asymptote to be minus 90 degrees. I'm not going to extend all the way to omega a yet because we, we can do an approximation between the two asymptotes. What about very small frequencies? Well, very small frequencies, this will be much smaller than one. I can ignore that and I, I end up with just one over one. So this has an angle of zero. This is a number with an angle phase of zero. Right. The question is, now there's a discontinuity. Notice here, when we were plotting the magnitude, the asymptote for high frequencies and low frequencies didn't have any discontinuity. Both of them meet at, at 0 dB. Right. But here we have an issue, we have a discontinuity. For high frequencies, we have minus 90. For low frequencies, we have 0. How do we represent this transition? Well, I mean, the most accurate way of representing this transition is to, to consider th that would minimize the error between the actual phase and the uh, curve and the asymptotic curves is to, and, and this is arbitrary, I mean, this is by choice, by convention. We take, we consider the, the, the high frequency approximation to be good valid up to 10 omega a, 10 times omega a, and we consider the low frequency approximation to be valid up to 0.1 omega a. Again, this is just a matter of choice. It, it, it uh, makes it easier to plot an uh, approximate, uh, approximate curve that fits closely to the, to the real curve. Why not 100 omega a? I mean, it's just a matter of choice. Right? Now the bridging of this gap, of this discontinuity, is done by just, by just connecting a straight line. Right. Uh, one last thing. What happens at omega a? At omega a, if omega equals omega a, well, tau a is 1 over omega a. So omega a, 1 over omega a is 1. So we end up with 1 over uh, 1 plus j. What is, what is the angle of 1 plus j? The angle is 45 degrees, right? On the complex plane, if I have 1 and then j, the angle of that complex number is 45 degrees. So I know that at omega a, the angle should be 45 degrees. Right? So, okay, so we know for sure that the angle should be 45 degrees. So now it's very easy to, to, to close this discontinuity, just connect a straight line. And this provides us with a very good uh, asymptotic approximation of the phase response. So we have a, we start at zero, we go down to the straight line with a slope of, well, this is 45, this is one decade, and this is uh, goes from 0 to minus 45 degrees, and then the other decade we go from four, minus 45 to minus 90, so clearly the slope is 45 degrees per decade, right? until we hit 10 omega a, and then we are at minus 90. Now the actual... Um, 
the actual uh, 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 phase curve, frequency curve, or response is going to look like this. It's going to be close for low frequencies. It's going to diverge a bit at this first point. It's going to hit 45 degrees because 45 de degrees is exact. It's going to be higher a little bit at the second point, second angle. But it's going to get closer to the asymptote. So this is the actual curve. And this is the asymptotic approximation. Okay. And the asymptotic approximation is good enough to give you an idea of what the frequency response looks like. Right. This was all developed at, at a time and an age before people uh, Revolved before people had digital computers, so people needed quick ways to to plot frequency responses for different circuits, and it's a, it's a I mean you have to admit it's a pretty ingenious way of achieving achieving uh, um, uh, this this task. Okay, so next we will uh, go to the simple zero, which is going to be the same thing, only it's going to be now flipped. It's going to we're going to go to the numerator instead of the denominator. Right, so we'll show you how this looks like. All right, so what what is a, sim a simple zero is, is just the same as a simple pole, only now it's in the denominator, numerator. So it's one plus um, tau, tau one s, let's say. Yeah. So in contrast, uh, I'm following the convention that's uh, being used in the textbook where uh, omega A, B, C is for poles, and, and omega 1, 2, 3 are for zeros. Let me see, did I follow this convention here? Yeah, I got it. Okay. Right? It doesn't matter what you call it. You could call it tau alpha for all you I care. All right? So, what's H J omega? H J omega is going to be 1 plus tau 1 J omega, 20 log magnitude H J omega, equals 20 log magnitude 1 plus tau 1 j omega 1 tau 1 right so it is exactly the same as the case of of, of a pole but now we have a positive sign here instead of a negative sign everything else is exactly the same right so so we have two uh, regions we have tau 1 much larger than 1 sorry tau 1 Omega much larger than one, meaning meaning that omega much larger than omega a, because omega a is one, omega one sorry. Omega one is just one over tau one. And then we have the second region, which is tau one omega much less than one. This is omega much less than omega one. Using the same logic, we get the same kind of asymptotes, but now we have a plus 20 slope. So if I plot the magnitude, sj omega magnitude in dB versus log omega, so I have here omega a, which is 1 over, oh sorry, omega 1, which is 1 over tau 1, right? I get the same thing. Let me change the color same asymptotes but now for the uh, for the linear asymptote uh, that has a slope it's going to be plus 20 instead of minus 20 so we're going to look like this so it's like it's the same as, as a pole but flipped uh, uh, with respect to the log omega axis and this will have a, um, a slope of 20 db per decade and then if I go and plot the, the phase log omega and then the phase hj omega, um, the phase is going to be what? It's going to be, well, we will have omega 1 and then we will have very high frequencies. And we said the convention is we take one, one what, what do we consider to be high frequency? It's one decade above omega one, and what do we consider to be low frequency? It's anything below than the, below one decade lower than omega one. Anything higher than ten omega one is high frequency. Anything lower than point uh, one omega one is low frequency. 
So this allows us to get the asymptotes. So at, at high frequencies, we can ignore the one, we end up with a J, so that's an angle of, of 90 degrees. At low frequencies, this becomes small, much smaller than one, we can ignore that, and we end up with one, one has an angle of zero degrees. Right? And then at omega equals G, uh, one, at omega equals omega one, so we have omega one times tau, tau one, which is omega one times one over uh, 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 omega one. So we'll have one plus j, which is which has an angle of 45 degrees. It's in the numerator, so it's going to be 45 degrees. So it's going to be 45 degrees, and then we connect this line like this. So this those those three lines would be the asymptotes for the for the uh, phase response. And, and, and the actual phase response is going to look something like that. It's going to be very close to the asymptote at low frequency, diverge a bit at this inflection point, hit 45 degrees exactly, diverge a bit at this point, and then get closer. It's going to look something like this. Right? So it's, it's very similar to the uh, simple pole, only it's uh, uh, flipped along the, the log omega axis. Okay, so this is what a, a simple pole, is, is, sorry, this is what a simple zero would look like. Now the question is, there's one left, right? There are two lefts. So we still have the conjugate complex poles and zeros. So we need to also to figure out how to plot those, and then we'll do that next. So remember um, the transfer function for a conjugate. Let's start with a conjugate pole. Uh, the transfer function for, for, for a complex conjugate pole, or, or what is called a quadratic pole, uh, would look something like this. It's going to be one. It's going to be a quadratic equation, of course, that has that resolves into into two complex conjugate roots. So it's a, it's, it will be a quadratic equation that has two complex conjugate roots. And it looks something like this. 1 plus 2 zeta a, let's say, s tau a plus s tau a squared. Right? Uh, let's consider the special case where, where zeta, the, the damping coefficient, is equal to 1. What do we get in this case? What would HS be in this case? Well, HS will be 1 over, right, zeta is 1, so, so it's going to be 1 plus 2 tau a s plus s tau a squared. Right, this th this is easy to, to, to factor, right? So we could write this as 1 over, or this is equal to 1 plus tau a s squared, right? You see that, right? So, so, so if I square this, I get 1, and then tau s, s tau a squared, I get this term, and then 2 tau a s times 1, which is this term. So when, when zeta equals to 1, this quadratic pole is going to be equivalent to a simple pole repeated twice. Okay, so this will look if we plot the body plot for this, it will be equivalent to to to. Uh, so this is at omega a. So this is h j omega magnitude in dB log omega. So this is going to be equivalent. So this kind of thing repeated twice, so, so once and twice. So what happens, we said that, that the whole point of the body plot is that when you have two things multiplied together, two expressions multiplied together, or two poles or two, two different uh, uh, sub-expressions multiplied together, you just add them, right? So what happens if we add z this term here, 0 plus 0, 
zero, right? But here we have a line that goes with a slope of minus 20 dB per tech F. What happens if we add to it another line that goes with a slope of minus 20 dB per, per tech F? We end up with a line with a slope of minus 40 dB per tech Right, that's due to adding those two, two, two uh, uh, asymptotic curves. So I have this curve, this is minus 20 dB per decade. I have another curve, also minus 20 dB per decade. I add them together. This is equivalent to multiplying those two poles. And I end up with a 0 plus 0. And then those, those terms here, or those lines here when they're added together, are equivalent to a larger slope double the slope essentially okay so that's how this this expression will look like when zeta equals one what about the the phase so if i plot let me go back to white so if i plot the phase How would the phase look like? And this is all with the zeta a equals 1. How would the phase look like in this case? Well, it will, it will again, it's, it's a repetition of this curve, right? So we have here, uh, we, we have this uh, first curve for the first pole. So when zeta equals one, this is just equivalent to two poles, that simple poles that are just repeated, right? So this is omega a, 0.1 omega a, 10 omega a, here, here, and here. Right? And this is just repeated twice. So add them together, we end up with zero, and then now the slope is double. So instead of minus 45 dB per decade, degrees per decade, now we have 90 degrees, minus 90 degrees per decade. And then the end angle is, instead of being uh, 90, minus 90, it's minus 90 plus minus 90, so it becomes minus 180, right? So it's pretty similar, but now this is omega A. We have zero up to, up to, uh, 0.1 omega a, then we go down with the slope of minus 90 degrees per decade instead of minus 45 degrees per decade, right? And at at uh, uh, omega a, at uh, uh, s equals at omega equals omega a, what happens? Well, we have uh, four, minus 45 minus 45. We have we have an angle of minus 90 here. And then at the end we reach an angle of minus 180 degrees. And this happens at 10 omega a. Okay. So we can find the, the, the body plots for this special uh, uh, case. But what happens if zeta a is not 1? It's not 0, sorry. Uh, sorry, it's not 1. Right? It's something, some other value. Right, so so uh, what happens if zeta a is less than one? Right, zeta a is less than one. Of course, if zeta a is larger than one, this is an overdamped case, and we can anyway uh, uh, um, resolve this uh, uh, pole. If zeta a is larger than one, we don't have a complex conjugate pole anymore. The poles, if zeta a is larger than one, the poles are separate around the real line. Right? Zeta equals one happens when the two poles are, are, are here. We have double, double poles. And then when zeta is less, is, is, is goes higher, the, less than one, we have an underdamped case and the poles split and, and they become complex conjugate. Okay. So what happens in the general case where, where zeta is not equal to 1, is less than 1, let's say, right? What ha is less than 1. What happens is that now uh, we will get a very similar kind of looking curve where at omega a, 
we go minus uh, uh, 40 dB per decade instead of minus 20 dB per decade right minus 40 dB per decade but now around the, the only difference will be the, see it's, it's the same for, for large omega and, and small omega it's the same uh, we'll get the minus 40 dB the uh, Bertegate phenomena and the zero because if, if, if uh, omega is large this term dominates and we have one plus over one over one plus s squared tau a squared and this squared can be taken out when we do the log and it becomes we get minus 40 so we get the same kind of like asymptotic behavior at very high frequencies and low frequencies but when zeta is is less than one what differs is the behavior around omega a we will notice if we plot this uh, using any means like a computer or something we will notice that we will start to get some sort of peak so so the curve is going to peak and then it's going to go down like this and for uh, certain other damping coefficient the curve might peak more and then go down like this ultimately when that damping approaches zero meaning uh, we are there's no damping whatsoever then the curve the body plot is going to approach infinity and then it's gonna go down like this so at, at exactly at omega a the gain is going to be infinity the magnitude of the body plot is going to be infinite right so so the amount of peak how much peak we get around omega a is is dependent on zeta a on the damping coefficient so this is hj omega magnitude in db this is as far as the magnitude is concerned as far as the phase is concerned what's going to happen this is log omega for different uh, zetas well we know that that for zeta so this is omega a 0.1 omega a 10 omega a we know for, for zeta equals 1, we'll get this behavior. So it's going to go to minus 180. Uh, for any other zeta, the same thing is going to happen. We're always going to end up at minus 180 and we're going to start at zero. Always, that's always going to happen, right? That's always going to follow because at high frequencies, we're still going to have approximately 1 over uh, s tau a squared. So we're still going to have uh, minus 90 twice and so on and so forth. But what will happen is with varying zeta, the slope here is going to be steeper, meaning as zeta decreases, approaches zero, we are going to gonna, uh, start dipping so later. So we're going to remain zero for more of the, of, the, of, 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 the, of the plot, body plot, and then we're going to start dipping later and we're gonna hit minus 180 sooner right so this for varying uh, uh, zeta zeta this will happen when zeta approaches zero what happens is that we're gonna get a curve that looks like this we're gonna remain zero until we hit omega a and then at omega a we're gonna instantly like it will be it will be an infinite slope we're gonna instantly hit hit minus 180 and when with increasing the zeta we're gonna have curves that look like this we're gonna get smoother and smoother and 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 slower slopes and so on and so forth okay so uh, uh the textbook has has a i mean has has a better uh, uh plot showing this than, than what i can draw uh, uh perhaps i can i can show that let me, let me show that next so um, so this is the, the plot shown in the text in the textbook um, so this shows how the body plot for the magnitude and the phase would vary uh, uh, depending on, on zeta uh, notice that for high frequencies and low frequencies the curves kind of kind of converge it's only uh, at the vicinity of, of, of Omega uh, a notice here the x-axis is omega omega tau 
right? Which is uh, uh, when when it's equal to one, that's when omega equals one over tau, right? So uh, so only and at, at at the corner frequency, so to speak, does the variation happen due to to zeta. And this is really something that's not really critically important because this is something that you can always plot easily in using a computer. What matters is the asymptotic behavior at high frequency. So it's fine when you're sketching this, depending on zeta, to kind of like approximately do the sketch. So so if I encounter a problem where, where, where zeta, let's say, is 0.2, I would approximately sketch something like this. Right? I don't have to get this exactly, this hump exactly. I just need to be aware, you just need to be aware that there is this sort of hump that happens. Of course, when zeta equals zero, the curve goes to, goes to infinity, as you can see here. Right? And then you can see here the phase. Again, the, the, the asymptotes are the same at low frequency and high frequency. What varies as zeta gets lower is that is that as zeta gets lower, smaller, we, we stay around zero more. So we stay around zero and we stay around 180 before we start we, we start doing the transition uh, for, for a wider range of frequencies. So this is for zeta equals one and this is for, for I believe zeta equals 0.1. As zeta goes to zero, what happens is that we keep staying longer at, at, at zero and longer at minus 180 until we reach a point where zeta equals to zero and we do like we have a sharp transition like this so this is the limit as zeta this is the limit of the all the curves as this as zeta approaches uh, zero all right um yeah so so uh, i mean th that's it as far that's all you need to know as far as oh, as far as drawing the plotting the different poles and zeros uh, then uh, uh, plotting a general transfer function will just will just be a matter of combining everything, right? So, for example, uh, for this transfer function, um, so you see there's a constant. It has many components, so it has a constant. It has a zero, right? So this would be if I draw it in, as a function of s, write it down as a function of s. So this would be GVS. So it's going to be ten. Uh, 0.1 s plus 1 again this is normalized form and then then and then s plus 1 and then 0.02 s plus 1 right so we have 1 2 3 4 four different expressions we have one constant one zero two poles and, and this is what the example is showing you uh, happening here so so it's just plotting that we're just plotting the constant first this line is a constant this is the zero right at, it inflicts at the certain frequency and this those are the two poles so this is p pole one and this is pole two right this shows the magnitude and this shows the different phases so this is the this is the, the phase for the zero and this is the phases for the two poles. Of course, the constant gives just a phase of zero. So that the, the, the combined body plot is gonna be just the summation of, of this curve and, and this curve and this curve and this curve. So when we sum up all four curves, we end up with this composite magnitude curve. So, right, so we started at 20 and then the first pole occurs, this pole, so we dip a bit and then the zero occurs so we kind of stop the dipping a bit so you can see it actually here so you can see the first pole occurs and then the zero occurs which cancel out cancels out the effect of the pole so the pole is trying to go minus 20 db per decade but the zero is trying to go plus 20 db per decade so this cancels out the effect of the of the pole but then we have another pole which brings the curve down minus 20 dB per decade, right? And this is the composite uh, phase. This would be <coughs> easiest to do in, 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 in log, 
logarithmic paper, graph paper. So there's something called log graph paper that would make drawing those those uh, plots easier. Perhaps we will do that uh, uh, for another example. Um, and and uh, I would suggest practicing doing those plots for a number of transfer functions. Uh, you could always verify what you did by going back to MATLAB and, and plotting the transfer function. There are ways to go to get the body plot in MATLAB. So I suggest you figure that out so that you have a way to test, to confirm that, that uh, the, the body plots that you're plotting make sense. So, uh, yeah. So uh, perhaps, yeah, I'll, I think I'll do this next time. I'll, I'm going to uh, uh, get some graph paper and, and go through one example or two examples to show you how to do those plots on pen, with pen and paper. I think it's a very useful skill for you to pick up. Uh, right. All right. Thank you, guys, and, 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 and uh, see you next time.